Properties of matrix operations. Properties of matrix algebra. The first property we're going to look at is of matrix addition. So if A, B, and C are M by N matrices, then the properties below are true. We have the commutative property of addition. Commutative means that you can add matrices in either order and you'll get the same results. We also have the associative property of addition and associative is all about grouping. So commutative is about order and associative is about grouping. So for practice, we have A, B, and C. We're going to show that A plus B is equal to B plus A. So we're going to look at the commutative property of addition. And again, to do this, we're just going to add. So two plus negative three is negative one. Negative one plus zero is negative one. Three plus one is four. And negative four plus negative three is negative seven. And if we add those in the other order, just like normal addition is, commutative and associative, we can see that negative 3 plus 2 is still negative 1, 0 plus negative 1 is still negative 1, 1 and 3 is 4, and negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. So this is just an example, not a proof, but an example showing the commutative property of addition. Um, your textbook, I believe, does have an actual mathematical proof, but that is not our focus in this course. Now we'll look at the properties of scalar multiplication. And again, this is specific to scalar multiplication. We're not talking about um, multiplying two matrices. We're talking about scalars. So C and D are scalars. This would be like four times three times matrix A is equal to four times three times matrix A. So those are both scalar multiples. 1 times a is equal to a, that's the multiplicative identity. In the same way, we can say 1 times 5 is equal to 5. 1 times a matrix a is going to be the same matrix a. And finally, we have the distributive property, which can be one of two ways. So you're either distributing a, a scalar of c to two matrices or distributing a matrix of a to two scalars. So we're just going to show, again, one example. 4AB is equal to 4A plus 4B. So in this case, I would take 4 and then I would add A and B together. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7. Then I would just multiply everything by 4. Negative 4, negative 4, 16, negative 28. And now I would look at 4a plus 4b. So I could add, I'm sorry, multiply a by 4. So 8, negative 4, 12, negative 16. Add to that 4b, negative 12, 0, 4, negative 12. And if I add, I should end up at the same result. So 8 plus negative 12 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. 12 plus 4 is 16, and negative 16 plus negative 12 is negative 28. So again, not a proof, just an example to show what that property is telling us. Now let's talk about properties of zero matrices, and we haven't even looked at a zero matrix yet, but a zero matrix is just a matrix full of zeros, if you can imagine. So we have A is an M by N matrix, so when it says zero with a subscript of MN, that just means it's M rows, N columns. So for instance, here A is a two by two matrix. So if I'm adding A to zero, two, two, the two by two matrix of all zeros, I just have zero, 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 zero. So our first property just says, if you add the zero matrix to a matrix, you end up where you started, which makes sense. I'm adding zero to everything, so nothing's changing. That's called the uh, additive identity. The second one is using the additive inverse. So we're saying if you take A and you add negative A, which means the additive inverse, the inverse of each of those values, you're going to end up with zero matrix. So 2 plus negative 2, 0. 
negative 3 plus 3, 0. 3 plus negative 3, 0. 7 plus negative 7, 0. And finally, we have if C times A is equal to the zero matrix, then either C has to be zero or A has to be the zero matrix. And hopefully this makes sense. We're saying if you take two things and you multiply them, two times X is equal to zero, we know that X must have been zero. So we're saying if we have two unknowns, we have C and we have A, which is a matrix, one of those has to be zero in order to end up with the zero matrix. Before we move on, let's talk a little bit about matrix algebra. Um, this isn't the matrix equation that we spoke about earlier, which we will look at later in the next lesson. Um, but this is saying, look, you have 2a plus x is equal to b, and we're trying to solve for x. So a is a matrix, b is a matrix. So what I'm trying to solve for is x. So it makes sense if I'm solving for x, which is also a matrix, that I would have to subtract 2a from each side, and that would give me x is equal to b minus 2a. So that's what I'm going to do to solve. I'm going to find x, and it's going to be b, 4, 0, 3, 1, minus 2 times a. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply um, a times 2. I'm actually going to multiply it by negative 2. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6, negative 2 times 3, negative 6, and negative 2 times 7, negative 14. And then I'm just going to add those together. So that would give me 0, 6, negative 3, negative 13. So this would be my final solution for x. Properties of matrix multiplication. Let's now talk about the properties of matrix multiplication. So A, B, and C are all matrices. So we're saying A times B times C can be grouped differently, but notice the order is remaining the same. So you can choose um, to multiply B times C first and then times A, or A times B first and then times C. And presumably your solution will be the same. That's the one we're going to look at together in a moment, but let's go ahead and look at the distributive property that says if you have, for instance, a times b and a times c, you can say that a is equal to b plus c. So go ahead and add b plus c first, which is what I would do because that would make my work less. Um, and same way, if c is at the end, it's okay to distribute or factor out that c as long as you're not changing the order. And then finally, we have if you have a little scalar c, you can take C times the product of AB, you can take C times A and then times B, or you can take C times B and then times A. Again, don't change the order. So we're going to take a look at A times B times C. And we're going to take a look at A times B times C. And we should get the same solution either way. So we've got a, which is 2, negative 1, 3, negative 4. We're going to multiply that times bc. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply b times c. So negative 3 times 0, that's going to give me 15 plus 0, which is 15. And then negative 3 plus 0, which is negative 3. Then I'm going to take the next row, turn it into a column negative 5 plus negative 3, negative 8, and 1 plus 0 is 1. So now, if I multiply those, let's see what I come up with. That gives me, uh, let me change colors here, 2, negative 1, that's going to give me 30 plus 8, or 38, that's going to give me negative 6 plus negative 1, or negative 7. And now I'm going to use 3, negative 4. 45 plus 32, 77. And negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. So as long as I didn't screw up, 
that's what I should get when I use the other grouping. Whoops, that was a three. So now I'm going to take A times B and multiply it by C. So I'm going to recopy C, but I'm going to go ahead and multiply A times B. So A times B, I'm going to take that first row, turn it into a column. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. 0 plus 3 is 3. Now take a look at the other row. 3, negative 4. Remember, we're just turning rows into columns. Negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. And 0 plus 12 is 12. Now, hopefully, when I multiply this out, I get the exact same value. Let's see if we do. I'm going to take negative 7, 3. That gives me 35 plus 3, which is 38. That gives me negative 7 plus 0, which is negative 7. Now, looking at the other row, negative 13, 12. I get 65 plus 12, which is 77. And I get negative 13 plus 0, which is negative 13. So we can see, using our amazing math brains, we did end up at the exact same solution using the associative property of matrix multiplication. It is very important to point out that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So A times B will almost never give you the same thing as B times A. Uh, some cases it will, but uh, as a general rule, it's not going to be equal. So we're just going to show that A times B is not equal to B times A. So I'm going to start with A times B, 2 times negative 1. I just built in some good extra practice for us here. That gives us negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. 0 plus 3 is 3. And then 3, negative 4. Negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13, and 0 plus 12 is 12. So that's AB. We're going to show that that's not equal to BA. So I'm going to take 3, negative 3, 0. That gives me negative 6 plus 0. I'm sorry, negative 6. So I could stop right here because I know that it's in fact not true. Uh, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3 plus 0. And then repeat for 1, negative 3. 2 plus negative 9 is negative 7. And negative 1 plus 12 is 11. So we can see that, in fact, AB does not equal BA. Let's talk now about the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is a special kind of square matrix that has 1s on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So I2 would be 1, 0, 0, 1. I3 looks just like this. I4, again, would be a 4 by 4 square matrix, 1s across the diagonal, and so forth. Again, that's called the identity matrix. And the identity matrix says if you take a matrix and multiply it by the identity matrix, you end up with the original matrix. Now, hopefully this makes sense. In the same way that if we had say 4 times 1, which is the multiplicative identity, I get 4. It's the same exact concept just with matrix multiplication. And again, it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply um, as long as the size is correct. So here, notice we're saying that A is an M by N matrix. So if we're multiplying on the right, it has to be size N, but on the left, it has to be size M which makes sense because we already know um, when we can multiply matrices. For instance, this is a 2 by 3, so it makes sense this has to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So we're just going to verify. We don't even have to really show work. We're just going to look at 2, negative 1, 4, and show exactly why this works. 2 plus 0 plus 0 gives me 2. 0 plus negative 1 plus 0 gives me negative 1. 0 plus 0 plus 4 times 1 is 4. 
So we can see that it works because we're only multiplying by that one value. So 3, negative 4, 0 gives me 3 plus 0 plus 0. 0 plus negative 4 plus 0. And 0 plus 0 plus 0, which is 0. So we can see that that makes sense. If I were going to do it the other way, 2, negative 1, 4, 3, negative 4, 0, what would I have to multiply on the left side? I should have left room on the left side, but I didn't. This is a, whoops, not negative 3. This is a 2 by 3 matrix. So if I were going to multiply it the other way, which we're obviously not going to, but we would know this would have to be the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So this would have to be 1, 0, 0, 1, but we would still end up back where we started. Properties of the transpose matrix. It makes perfect sense that before we talk about the properties of a transpose matrix, we should understand what a transpose matrix is. A transpose of a matrix denoted with A with a superscriptive T is formed by writing its rows as columns and columns as rows. So if I were to take A and find A transpose, Notice this is a 3 by 2 matrix. My result will be a 2 by 3 matrix. And I'm going to take 4, negative 1, 0, 3, negative 2, 5. So you can think about it in either way that you want. I took the rows and turned them into columns. Some people prefer to think of columns and make them rows. And it's really the same result. Let's also find B transpose. So B transpose, notice this is a 3 by 1, so this is going to be a 1 by 3, and it's going to be negative 4, 3, negative 2. So that is the transpose of a matrix. So properties of the transpose matrix, if you take the transpose of a transpose, you do end up back where you started. Those things um, undo one another. You have the transpose of a sum, so if you're taking the sum of two matrices and then finding the transpose, you can take the transpose of each first and then add them together. If you have a scalar, C times the matrix A, and then the transpose of that, you can take the transpose and then um, take the scalar multiplied by those new elements. And then we also have transpose of a product. If you have A times B transpose, it's the same as B transpose, A transpose. So be careful here on this one. We're saying that if you have the transpose of A times B, that order is going to switch around. So we're just going to verify that. The first thing here is they're asking me to multiply first. So I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 1. That's going to give me well, hold on, this is a 2 by 2, and this is a 2 by 1, so I'm going to get a 2 by 1 in result. And then I'll take the transpose. So I'm going to get negative 6 plus negative 2, which is negative 8. And then change that with 3, negative 4. That's going to give me negative 9 plus negative 8, which is negative 17. And then I'm going to take the transpose, and the transpose of that is negative 8, negative 17. So now let's take a look at the other side. This is telling me that I can turn this into negative 3, 2, and turn this into 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4. So I've applied the transpose to each, and now I'm going to multiply. This is a 1 by 2, and this is a 2 by 2. Oops, 2 by 2. So my result is going to be a 1 by 2. So, so far that looks good. Now I'm going to take the first row, negative 3, 2, and multiply it. That gives me negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8 and negative 9 plus negative 8 is negative 17. Up next, we're going to take a look at section 2.3, the inverse of a matrix.